We're back, this is Dave Vellante from Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's coverage of HP Discover. We're here live in Barcelona. Margaret Dawson is here, she's with HP's Cloud Services. Margaret, great to have you on theCUBE. Thanks, great to be back. So, Discover Barcelona, this is a um, good show, a lot of good Happening. vibe, a lot of energy. Yeah. What do you think? It has been fantastic, actually. There is more energy here, and I think we've actually, as a company, announced more exciting things and products across the entire spectrum than I've seen. Yeah, so, awesome. so the cloud picture's starting to come together. Yep. You know, this, it's a little more in focus. Why don't you take us, take us through what's happened, let's say, since we last were on uh, covering HP Discover, you know, six months ago in June in Las Vegas. In beautiful Las Vegas. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> uh, hotter, you know, not as, ex not, not as elegant, and uh, certainly not as much of a European flair, unless you get, went to some unless casino. Unless you go to Paris, where, Paris, yeah, Paris, or Paris, right. right. <laughs> but, uh, so what's happened in the last six months in HP so Cloud? So I, I think there's a few things. One is that six months ago, we had already said, we're committed to cloud, you know, we're here for the long run, here are some of the things we're doing. I think what's changed over the past six months is organizationally, just internally, we've now organized ourselves where we are one cloud business unit. Um, so all of the cloud solutions, R&D, go-to-market, sales, is in a single team. And what that means for our customers is they have one place to go, whether you know, they're looking just to figure out their cloud strategy with our services team, all the way through implementing private cloud, public cloud, virtual private cloud, or any flavor of those. Um, and the strategy that's behind that is really being delivered on. So I mentioned that we've announced so many things. You know, if you look at what we announced just this morning at Discover, seems like it was three days ago, um, you know, we announced Next Generation Cloud System, which is our main private cloud uh, solution for customers. We announced uh, great progress on our public cloud, a new virtual private cloud portfolio, everything from a basic public cloud up to customized managed. So literally, this hybrid vision that we talked about even a few months ago now is not only coming into fruition, but we are absolutely executing against it, as well as with the OpenStack. So there's just been a huge momentum in terms of execution, our strategy, how we are going to market, and our ability to show that we are executing against this vision of open, enterprise-grade, hybrid cloud. Yeah, and a lot of times you get the organization right, and all of a sudden good things start to happen, right? So essentially you guys are, <laughs> you know, you, uh, you got to be committed to cloud in this yep. day and age, so you're a distribution channel for the enterprise group, right? I mean, right. you can buy their products if you so choose, and if they don't live up to, to the grade, you can go somewhere else, right? But so. I, and that's an interesting point. You know, we, we hear a lot that cloud cannibalizes traditional infrastructure sales. And I think there's two things about that. What we have seen at HP, and I would say what I've seen in the market overall, is that cloud can actually pull infrastructure sales. So, you know, we are seeing a greater build out of infrastructure to power cloud computing. I always call it, you know, cloud is the data center in disguise. So, massive infrastructure build out. But it also drives next generation, right? It drives innovation, because we need higher efficiency. We can't do things in the same way. So I think that those two things are actually working very well hand you know, in hand. You know, that's a good point. I would like to talk about that a, a little bit, sort of. I've, and I've been in this business a long time, and, right. I, and there's been many, many examples of, you know, uh, markets that were going to be dead. Because, right. you right. know, one is going to disrupt the other. And it, we, we have examples of that happening, but, the thing about cloud is, is this notion that, it's, okay, it's lower cost as a result, it's going to eat out the core of sort right. of IT that's been bloated and, and overinflated margins, et cetera. My experience has been, and I wonder if you could just comment, is the market's elastic. If you reduce the cost of compute and storage, mm -hmm. and also importantly, reduce the labor cost right. around that, innovation occurs, and people end up buying more networking and compute and it. storage. You got and, it. And so, so, okay, so you agree with that. Now, yeah. it's self-serving, but do you have evidence of that actually happening? No, absolutely. I mean, I, I think we can see that, and I, I think what is also a little bit misleading is that three, four years ago, when you asked people, why are you going to the cloud, cost was always number one, right? And that was very public cloud focused, right? Or even SaaS, the, the application side. And now if you talk to especially large enterprises, but really companies anywhere, it cost may be a factor of it more from a, you know, what is my you know, return on investment or how is this going to impact my overall IT budget or business budget. 
but it's agility, it's time to market, it's, it's innovation is really what's driving them using the cloud. It's how do I get this out to my customers or my employees in a, in a better way, in a faster way, in a self-service way, right? And spin it up very, very quickly. So that agility has become the main thing, not the cost. And so in doing that, you're seeing a lot of people create private cloud, right? Which has that infrastructure piece and is not necessarily the lowest cost, but it fulfills all those other things that they need to do for the business. So it's not just public cloud, and that's why we've invested in this entire spectrum, because it's not happening. There was, you know, pundits that were saying five years ago, oh, everything's just going to go to the public cloud. The that big was, switch. Right, it was neither realistic nor is it Sorry, happening. Sorry, Nick, you got that wrong too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we but, love Nick Carr. Right, but right, but it's just not happening. Just, yeah. and, the, and the reason is, there's still a lot of investment in that legacy, so-called legacy IT, right? And the reality is also that some applications aren't ideal for cloud. And I think that's the learning we're having. And so how do you then bring this all together from traditional IT where some applications are going to sit, mission critical data is still going to sit, we're not going to throw that all over the place, right? That's very, very sensitive compliance wise. And the build out of private cloud is very, very strong and it's become a huge market. John and I often talk, I mean, cloud's relatively new, but we're entering even yet a new phase, probably the fourth great phase of cloud. But at, at first, right. it was just sort of this development platform right. and you know, web startups could use it. And then when the economy dipped down, you saw a, a rush to, to shift CapEx right. to, to, to OpEx, whether it was you know, going to the public cloud or even trying to just be more efficient in the, in the, in the right. private cloud. And then coming out of uh, the recession, you, you seem to have this big innovation cycle with so-called shadow IT. Right. So, and now, we, we see CIOs, you know, many of them, still some people with their heads in the sand, but many yeah. CIOs really embracing this, saying, look, this is the trend, it's happening, and I want my IT to run that way. So I wonder if you could comment on that and see what you're seeing. Yeah, so I think we need to be careful, because shadow IT is absolutely a reality, and it's happening, and, and you know, the, the quote that's everyone's favorite is the CMO is going to have a bigger IT budget than the CIO, right? I, I don't think that's necessarily true, but I, I think that the CIO or the IT needs to embrace the uh, businesses need to, to perhaps go into some of these new cloud solutions, whether it's on their own, but they can't lose the governance of it. And I think what we're going to see in the coming year is IT actually saying, okay, you can go do that, but I still need to have some kind of control, if for no other reason that they have lost control of their data. Right, people are putting data everywhere, and if, if something happens to that corporate data, there's one person that's to blame, and that's the CIO. Right, the CEO isn't going to go to the marketing guy and go, oh, we just had a data breach. Right, that's going to go back to the IT department. Yeah. So there's this balancing act that I think really needs to happen uh, in, in the next year, which is, first of all, do an audit and make sure you know where are all these clouds. Because if you talk to most CIOs, a lot of them don't even know what's out there or where their data is. So first of all, just find out what you don't know. And then I think it's determining, okay, how are you going to govern this? And allow the agility the business needs, but you have got to have some kind of you know, compliance, governance, security controls, around these cloud applications and around your data. Uh, and finding that balance, I think, is going to be an interesting tension as we move through the and that, Well, and I do think that's the role of the, the, the CIO. I mean, we saw this right. before with distributed computing. Yep. It's, 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 you're going to be herding cats if everybody goes off and does, does their own cloud. So do you envision the, the CIO having a, a, essentially a cloud portfolio? And yes. th these clouds are certified for these types of workloads and, and I think these that's a good aren't. way to put it. I think there could be a certification role that they play and definitely maybe a vendor criteria or okay, you're going to go out and do this. Here's the three things we need or you know, here's the security things that you need to need to have. And you know, I could tie that back to our own cloud portfolio. We have a security officer and we are SOC compliance and my public cloud, my website, my private cloud solutions, they all have to make sure we maintain that compliance because that is our our promise to our enterprise customers. The same thing's going to happen. If you're a PCI compliant industry, so retail or, or something like that, nothing you do can break that. And so it doesn't matter who is you know, behind the budget in that cloud, the CIO's role has got to be maintaining that governance model so you're not breaking your promise to your customers or to your you know, regulators. Okay, so how would you just summarize HP's cloud strategy? So we are a hybrid cloud strategy and it's the cloud enterprises rely on. So you know, that's a little bit of a tagline, a little bit of marketing speak, but it really is what we're building. So there are three tenants to that. Open is one, and that's about choice. That's about uh, open source, literally. So we have committed to OpenStack as the technology foundation for our common cloud architecture. 
um, and we will continue to build on that so that everything works together and customers have that confidence you know, of a single common platform. What that also gives is that interoperability. So one of the biggest pain points that people have in cloud right now is I've got all this different you know, stuff going on, whether it be you know, on-premise or private or public or you know, applications. You've got to have an open ecosystem and an open architecture to support that. And I think one of the things that I hope we're going to be pushing more is to drive APIs to more of an open yet standard-based uh, structure. Um, you know, API complexity right now and proprietary APIs is causing a lot of pain in the market uh, if you talk to even small businesses. Um, and there's talk about, you know, should OpenStack work with some of the proprietary APIs? I would push it back to them and say, well, maybe some of those closed APIs should figure out how to interrupt with OpenStack. So open is a key thing. Well, and that doesn't seem to be happening. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, no, that, that's, there's not a lot of um, that now, but I think if the, if the market starts demanding it, you know, you've got to push and pull, right? It, it's, it's true with any market that but we've I mean, seen. The, the, but, but that concept of the, you know, Everybody says Amazon turned the data center into an API. It's a very powerful concept. And, and it so is, you, but look back at Linux. Look back at open source, right? Did, did Microsoft want to play with, with Linux in right, the day? Right, no, I agree. but then they were forced but to. But essentially you're saying that's the right so It's you know, the right thing to framework, do for the customer. But it's got to be open. That's exactly. your argument. So, it is. I, I, so I, at, at reInvent, we had Jerry Chen was on. He had a great comment. He, yep. He's coming back from the OpenStack yep. uh, conference in uh, Hong Kong. And I said, how would you compare you know, what, what Amazon's doing with OpenStack, he said, well, Amazon's trying to be one thing to everybody, and OpenStack's trying to be all things to everybody. And I thought that was sort of a, a good summary. So then we started the discussion. Well, OpenStack needs some muscle. <laughs> right. Is HP that muscle? Absolutely. Okay, so, yeah. so it's not, to me it's not necessarily a bad thing that OpenStack is trying to be, a, maybe it's not all things, but a lot of things to a lot of people. That's essentially well, what HP is, is a Correct, company. so what, what we're doing with OpenStack is we're saying we will make this enterprise grade. So we will provide a hardened version of OpenStack for our enterprise customers. And we'll do that in a few different ways. But you know, if you are going to use OpenStack with HP, you will know that it will work with other products within our portfolio. So it will be interoperable. That it will be secure. You guarantee that, I mean, it will be Right. Yeah. It will be, it will be under the SLA that you expect, whether it be the four nines or five nines or whatever your SLA says, right? So there is, there's an enterprise commitment uh, that we are making to OpenStack. So, you know, we, we went back before talking about three tenants. So that open is one, enterprise grade is another. So everything we do in, class, in cloud is something that an enterprise can rely on. Um, and the third thing is hybrid, that we are going to build out this hybrid portfolio so that you can have this experience no matter what cloud or traditional IT you're using. What, let's talk about enterprise grade. Okay. Because that, that phrase gets thrown out there a lot, but so let's <laughs> unpack it a little bit. What does enterprise grade mean to, to you and to HP? So I would turn that and say, what does it mean to a customer? Because that's who cares Great. about it, right? Yeah. So one of them is security. So it means that everything they buy has the security that they need, whether it be that they are allowed the access control rules that they need, right, and that is consistent. The manageability so you know what's happening in it. Just the hardening, meaning the code has been tested, right? A lot of people forget that when we talk about IT security, there's security at the very basic level of the code itself and how it's tested, that is it built with secure development processes. So that and much more is what we, that's one piece of the enterprise grade. Reliability, so it's the SLA. Um, Sar made a joke uh, you know, this morning in his keynote that uh, you know, an SLA should be something that you know about, that you get support with, that you have a live person letting you know if something's going wrong. You shouldn't learn about it from a Twitter feed. <laughs> uh, so you know, when we talk about uh -huh. enterprise grade, it's about you know, reliability right, are, and customer support that is real. Right, there are some SLAs like, hey, we'll do our best if we don't send us an email and you know. We've but, seen a lot of issues with reliability in a lot of public clouds where you know, things go down and you find out about it in the news media. Sure, um, but 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 you would would you agree that for even for HP public cloud you've got to have a an SLA that reflects the, the the massive potential for scale and it's okay to have an SLA in the public cloud that's that's less stringent than an, than an SLA in a in a hybrid cloud. Or Absolutely, a private cloud. but the point is that when you publish that SLA and for the public cloud we have a published 99.95 percent SLA that it means something and if something does happen that you have live real people in support that you can call and talk okay, to that's on the phone. Good, that's enterprise that, grade. That's important. Okay. So, so that is a difference between your public cloud and the other yep. public clouds yep. out there. I mean, we're talking about Amazon when we talk about the public cloud. Let's face it, this. They, they you know, invented the concept, and so I like to, I know you don't like to mention their name necessarily <laughs> on camera, but, but it's good for customers. This is a conversation we have with no, customers all the time. No, it absolutely is. So the difference between your SLA would be that you can actually talk to a live person. 
That is one of the differences, yes. Okay, um, talking about your public cloud SLA, and obviously the private cloud's a whole different ball game. Right, but, but the point, so if you think about our hybrid strategy, we're taking oftentimes the economics or the self-serviceability of public cloud and putting it into other cloud models, and taking that hand-holding or more premium service level that you get with private cloud to the public cloud, right? So it's, it's bringing it together so it's that consistent experience no matter what delivery model you're using. That's what we bring. So another question I have, because in talking to customers, I've found that a lot of times what they want is, um, we're talking about security, everybody talks yep. about oh, how great our security is, right. everyone. So it's hard for a customer <laughs> to kind of, hard, it's hard for them to discern. Yeah. A big difference seems to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you will do specials. And if a customer says, this is what we need, Absolutely. you say, all right, we'll do that. And I think that's a really good point because going back to the enterprise and the enterprise grade, there is that ability to adapt to what the customer needs. I will tell you in, in past lives, uh, you know, I was building out a DR architecture and we were looking, do we build out a secondary data center or could we use the cloud for that? And the problem we had with using the public cloud is we could literally not, you know, uh, create the architecture the same as we had it in our primary data center. So we couldn't actually do a warm or hot DR scenario. Um, and that was because the way we wanted to architect failover and our load balancers, we could not repeat because they said, no, this is the box. This is how we architect this. Right. Take it or leave it. Uh, so we left it. We had to, you know, we couldn't do that. That was not our promise. So you see that a lot. And there's times where they need a very customizable and sometimes even a managed experience for their cloud. So if you want a standard, Vanilla, you self-service it, you do it all, we've got that. If you want highly customized, configurable, managed, we've got that too, and, and that, that's the promise. And that concept applies to the, to the public cloud piece of the spectrum as well, or uh, not So, I mean, most people that are wanting public cloud, they want it to be fairly uh, standardized. I mean, HP's right? public cloud. Right, Yeah, okay. So, so it's a fairly standardized, based on OpenStack. Yeah. There's still things we can do to be agile and flexible. We work with a lot of solution partners, that type of thing. But uh, when, it, when you talk to people about more of that customizable experience, that tends to, to be yeah. more about the private cloud anyway. Or the hybrid. Or the hybrid experience. And I think, you know, one of the things is that, uh, you know, Overall, when I think about cloud, I tend to use the words extend and attach, and I think that that is a way a lot of enterprises think about it, but it's not the way someone who their whole business is that would ever talk about cloud. But at the end of the day, for cloud to really be successful, for the enterprise to be successful with cloud, is that they're looking at it as an extension of what they're already doing. So if you've invested you know, millions in an SAP installation, you're not going to flip that over and throw it in the public cloud. That would be ridiculous. Um, and very hard, by the way, because SAP wouldn't really you know, do that very yeah, agile-wise. Yeah. But, but it's also probably not the best thing. So the question is, okay, well what if my SAP is working with you know, some kind of data store and I want to extend and, and, or burst to that for excess capacity or for test storage or whatever, even, or know. test dev, or yeah. I'm going to build some apps on top of it yeah. or whatever it is. So the cloud can extend that. Whether you do a private cloud, you do a VPC or a public cloud, you're enabling this ability for them to grow their IT infrastructure or grow their capacity in a very seamless way without you know, investing millions of dollars again. So inter interoperability across your ecosystem with the OpenStack component Correct. is something that you are committed to. Absolutely. And I would say that you know, there's been some discussion in the media this week. We are also committed to interoperability with third party clouds, especially when it comes from private cloud to public. So we support AWS bursting from our private cloud today. Uh, we just announced three additional uh, public clouds. So Azure, um, Arsys, and SFR. Arsys and SFR are two big European providers that we partner with that now cloud system, our private cloud solution, you can burst to those. Um, and so I think that there's a couple different ways to look at interoperability, right? There's the, the OpenStack side, and then there's, there's times we have to work with other third parties out of what the customer wants to do. How about packaging applications in your cloud? Um, bringing ISVs from your ecosystem in. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. So we're doing some of that today. Our public cloud actually has a very strong uh, solution partner ecosystem. A lot of those come through the OpenStack uh, community as well. Uh, but we are building out a very large solution partner ISV ecosystem across HP Cloud. And I think there's lots of different ways that they can uh, collaborate with us, whether it be repackaging, reselling what we already have, uh, selling their applications on our cloud. Um, and then we also have what we call HP on HP. So so you can assume over time that anything that we sell from a software or application will be available across those different delivery models. So if you come to us and say, oh, I've got a big data and analytics problem, it's like, great. Do you want that, you know, Vertica in a hardened appliance? Do you want it Vertica as a service on our public cloud? Do you want it, you know, deployed on your private cloud? How do you want to consume or deliver or build that? 
Um, and so that's absolutely a key part of the vision and strategy. So our research at Wikibon clearly shows, I mean, hybrid cloud is the dominant strategy. In fact, if you add up the people who say we're going hybrid right. or private, it's probably 80% of the customers. About 10% say, you know what, we're all public cloud and it's startups and it's small businesses right. and then you know, a number of people are going that direction, but the, the large enterprises clearly are right. going to the hybrid. Even the guys who are saying they're going hybrid, they're actually or hybrid today. Probably going I think hybrid today. Do, right. Yeah. right, so I presume you see that as well. Yep. Um, so what are you seeing with, with hybrid? Uh, what, what is it, how is it manifesting itself? Are you actually seeing federated applications? Do you expect to see that over time? That's a great question. We can talk about that a little bit. So, I think that in, in the research that we've actually done with our customer base, it's interesting because a lot of people say, oh, we're hybrid, it's maybe about 40, 50%. But then when you say, do you have private cloud? They say yes. Is your company also doing anything with public cloud? Yes. And yet they didn't answer that they're hybrid. So that yeah. there's some misunderstanding even you know, within the community of what is hybrid, what is not hybrid. The majority of our customers have private and public today. Now, it may not be under the purview of IT, right. but as a company, you know, they are already dealing with hybrid. And I think it goes back to what we were talking about before, that you know, the challenge for IT is somehow getting some kind of centralized governance and control and management of that. Um, in terms of federation, I think you know, the biggest issue around federation of anything is more around identity and access controls. Mm -hmm. um, not whether that app can sit in five different places or in private and public. I think right. we'll see some of that, but when I talk about federated, it's always federated ID or federated security or federated access. Um, and so I think that is actually the biggest issue from an IT perspective. Okay, but so we're coming full circle on the strategy. I mean, essentially your strategy is to, yeah, hybrid, however you define hybrid, right. uh, public and private, all these different clouds. HP strategy is to essentially wrap them in a way that you can manage them consistently, right. govern them consistently. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's been your cloud vision all along. And we're executing on it. So absolutely. talk about where you're, where you're knocking down wins. Just so, I mean, starting with private cloud, we're number one in the market. And that was just validated by a Forrester wave that came out that said we lead the pack in private cloud. Cloud system is our key solution there. Uh, so we're number one in private cloud, and, and that is our anchor. It was funny, Bill called it the uh, Forrester Magic Quad. I, yes. I got a good chuckle out of that. Yes, I he love did. it. <laughs> we will, we will, uh, compatibility we will work there. We to all make know sure. What he means, right? we, love, we love Forrester and Gardner, <laughs> they have different products. Uh, we love Wikibon too. Uh, you need to have your uh, triangle or whatever there you're you going to call it. We just let the community vote. There you go, there you go. <laughs> the customers um, decide. So obviously, and we've seen huge growth you know, with cloud yeah. system. Um, you know, while we don't release revenues, it's just been a hugely successful product. So that's really our anchor. And now we're able to, you know, we obviously have public cloud. We launched that just over a year ago. Huge growth there, uh, continue to expand our public cloud footprint. We just launched the latest version, so we're on trunk you know, with OpenStack, which is going to be an ongoing thing. Um, currently, OpenStack's on Havana, so we're on Grizzly moving to Havana, so right. you'll continue to see us do that. Um, lots of new capabilities there around larger instances, which the enterprise needs, so that's another enterprise grade capability. Um, we then have our VPC portfolio, so virtual private cloud um, is another one that a lot of people talk about. So it's taking that multi-tenancy um, of a public cloud, but locking that down so you can control it and just your organization uses it, right? And you can get that, again, just standard self-service, you know, spin up a VPC on our public cloud, or you can customize it and have it managed for you, uh, you know, in another uh, in another way. So, it's literally that entire thing, and we're executing on all those levels. I wonder if we can unpack your announcements a little bit. You said you had a yep. next generation cloud system, new yep. public cloud. Uh, that basically, just sort of laying out the hybrid vision. Start yep. with the next gen uh, cloud system. Okay. Uh, give us a little detail there. So, a few things. One of the reasons it's called next gen is we now support OpenStack. So I go back to what our vision and strategy was that OpenStack will serve as that technology foundation across our hybrid cloud uh, portfolio. So OpenStack uh, is now uh, integrated with cloud system. Uh, we also added additional integration with new public clouds. Uh, we also um, now have added a ton of new features around uh, the way you can configure things, a user experience that is very consumer inspired, yep. so what you'll see across all of our cloud solutions is much more of a um, you know, consumer, you know, widgy widge type of UI that everyone is demanding. You know, that's really, that whole smartphone and, and uh, tablet mentality has been driven into the enterprise. Um, so you'll see that kind of UI and consistent user experience across all of our cloud uh, products. 
And uh, this cloud system incorporates the latest version of our management platform, which was another announcement we made, uh, which again is taking that common UI, common experience, and the ability to look for everything from traditional IT all the way through public cloud or VPC, and, and be able to manage that holistically. Because um, what enterprises want is that single view or that consistency of management, and for their users to say, oh, I'm in this cloud, I want to spin up you know, an instance, or I want to go you know, uh, download this application, it's the same experience for them. Right, it needs to be just very, very simple. Okay, so um, I think you're right. I, I think there was this sort of perception, okay, HP's all in on cloud, but there was, you know, six, nine months ago, there was a lot of marketing around cloud. Clearly a, a, a management commitment, but you, you just couldn't feel the, the, I mean, you could feel the enthusiasm, but you really couldn't right. touch it, you couldn't see it, so I'm, I'm sensing not only enthusiasm now, but real proof points. Absolutely. So let's, let's look out a year from now. What kinds yep. of things should we expect as outside observers? Yeah. You know, more features, more functions, more customers, so I, but I, I think, what are yeah. your big objectives? So at that layer, I think you should, you're absolutely going to see continued innovation around mm. feature functionality, ease of use, making hybrid simple or simpler um, to use, to manage, to configure, to scale. Um, but there's also going to be just fundamentally some great new things happening, continued uh, pushes on the management side, but on the OpenStack side specifically, I think you'll see some great announcements of how enterprises can get their hands on that a little bit more and start to deploy it more easily in whatever they want. Um, so there's been a lot of push for us to allow enterprises to have their own OpenStack distribution that they don't you know, deal with, that we make that easy for them. Uh, so we announced something quite a while ago called Cloud OS, mm -hmm. um, which is that technology foundation. You'll see a lot of progress um, around that and how we're using that across the company as well as how enterprises can use it themselves. Awesome, we're really excited about the OpenStack initiatives. We'll be at yeah, the so OpenStack we. Summit. We were there last year. One of the best events that we did uh, last year was in uh, Portland. Portland. I hear it's going to be Atlanta this year, yes, is right. that right? Yeah, yep. so we're excited to be there as well. And, uh, and appreciate you coming on theCUBE, Margaret. Absolutely, it's been great. great. To, Thank you so much. Great to see you, you and too. thanks for sharing your insights. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. John Furrier and I will be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from Barcelona. We'll be right back. <laughs>